Greetings. Welcome to my podcast that features my book, Colonial American History Stories, 1215 through 1664. In this episode, we learn about Lucas Vasquez de Alion's attempt to settle the North American mainland. On September the 29th, 1526, Lucas Vasquez de Alion landed in North in South Carolina. Scanty records leave little evidence of where the explorer landed, but most historians think he came ashore on Winya Bay near present-day Georgetown, South Carolina. The search for a site for what would be the first European settlement in North America since the Vikings 500 years earlier began. Spaniards Captain Francisco Gordillo and Pedro de Uejo had explored the area in 1529, capturing natives to use as slaves. Captain Francisco Francisco Gordillo was a subordinate of Del Alion. Dorians know very little about him. De Alion arrived in Hispaniola in 1520 and sent Gordillo out on an exploring mission in 1521. His goal was to visit the Bahamas to capture slaves. However, previous slave traders had almost depopulated the island, so the search was in vain. During this exploration, Gordillo met De Hiquejo, and the two men joined forces. Together they sailed along present-day Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and the Virginia coasts. During this voyage, they named many of the geographical features they found. They landed near the Santee River and captured about 60 natives to serve as slaves. Then they returned to Hispaniola. The Spanish search for gold in the New World required manual labor. For that labor, the Spanish relied on slaves to provide it. Pedro de Guejo was one of the Spaniards known as the Spanish slavers that roamed the Caribbean, capturing natives to sell as slaves. Lucas Vasquez de Alion lived from about 1475 through October the 18th of 1526. Alion was a judge on the, on the Hispaniola Real Audiencia, or Royal Audience, Probably a native of Castile, Spain, he arrived in Hispaniola around 1520. He decided to make an attempt at colonization in what is now the southeastern United States after listening to the stories of one of Gordillo's captured natives, Francisco de Chacora. Most of the natives captured by Gordillo, Dia, and de Cuejo had died, but Chicora had survived. He learned Spanish and received baptism. He took the name Francisco de Chicora after his baptism. Spanish King Charles I granted Alion a patent for a colony in 1523. He began preparations by sending de Cuejo as a peacekeeping mission into the area in 1525. De Cuejo explored the area between the 13th and 40th parallel, the 30th and 40th parallel, during this expedition, he, direct, he erected several stone markers claiming the area for Spain. The explorer also persuade, persuaded a number of natives to return with him to learn Spanish and serve as interpreters on later missions. By July 1526, Alion was ready to establish his colony. He set out from Hispaniola with three ships, 600 settlers, and 100 horses. After losing some of his ships in a river he called the Jordan, he landed his expedition on September the 29th, 1526, and began his search. Spanish explorer Lucas Vasquez de Alion founded the first European settlement, San Miguel de Gadulpam, on mainland North America on October the 8th, 1526, after several days of searching. I'm sorry, but my Spanish is horrible. I don't know any. I'm Trying to pronounce these words is a nightmare for me. Anyway, historians still debate the location of this settlement, as no one has discovered any physical remains and Alion's records are scanty. There are several conflicting theories, but no hard evidence as to where Alion established the colony. Most scholars believe that the most likely location was on Sapello Island off the coast of Georgia. Many feel that many some feel that it was in the present Harris Neck National Wildlife Refuge region. At any rate, the colony failed to maintain a permanent existence. Alion died there, and the colonists fled the town after spending three months of winter, which was a harsh one. The colonists also suffered from disease, supply shortages, and problems with the native tribes. Prior to returning, one of the three ships sank, forcing the refugees to crowd onto two ships. Since the Spanish used African slaves to do much of the work, the first use of these slaves in North America was at this settlement. It is also the first documented slave rebellion, as the slaves revolted during a period of dissension between the Spanish settlers. The next episode will relate Panfelo de Navarrez's early attempts to settle Florida. Find out more about colonial history in the United States by purchasing the book Colonial American History Stories 1215 through 1664. 
The book is a timeline of events from Christopher Columbus to 1664. It is part of a larger series of 12 books, the Timeline of the United States History Series. The history at this time takes the reader up to the opening year of the Revolutionary War, 1775. I am currently writing 1776. You can find the books on my website, www.mossypeatbooks.com. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, and other online booksellers. You may choose to purchase the book in ebooks or softbound versions. An audiobook version is available on Google Play. At the conclusion of this series, I will compile the episodes into an audiobook. The audiobook will be available on Audible, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, as well as many other audiobook sellers. You can find this podcast on Apple, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, TuneIn, and many other podcast platforms. I publish a video version on YouTube and Rumble. You can also order the books directly from me, the author, on the webpage. If you wish me to sign a book, just send an email to mossyfeetbooks at gmail.com requesting a signed book and instructions on how you want me to address it. Note, if you send me an email, I will add you to my contact list. Readers on the list will receive an email from me announcing when I publish a new book. If you do not want me to, want me to add you to the list, tell me and I will not add you. Listeners to this podcast that want email notifications of my releases can just send me an email requesting addition to the list. You can choose to have your name removed at any time. If you browse the website, you will find dozens of sample chapters, one for each of my books. I hope 